بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد ما بالله بعض السنسس من الإسلام اعلم أن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار perhaps we all know the importance of the topic and the subject that I'll be addressing be idni subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he himself did not give as a choice whether we should repent or walk without repentance rather he said to the believers oh who you believe ya you alladheena amanu tubu ila allahi tawbatan nasuha oh who you believe repent to your lord a sincere repentance. However, brothers and sisters, since we know the rulings of the repentance itself, I like to look at it from a different angle and see some of the fruits that a lot of people may overlook. And I want you to imagine with me the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by the way, unless you release your imagination unless you pretend that you are with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looking at his companion looking at the face of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in your mind looking at the face of Umar bin Khattab looking at the face of Abu Dujana looking at the faces of the Sahaba unless you have that in mind you may not grasp or benefit from the following hadith to the fullest now imagine the messenger of Allah sitting and Abu Darda, Abu Dar, I'm sorry, reporting this hadith. And he said, the Messenger of Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Indeed, I know the last man who will enter paradise and the last man who will come out of hellfire. Now, the Sahaba, obviously, now they want to know what are, who are these individuals. And then the Messenger of Allah painted the picture of the individual who would enter paradise and he explained to them and he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to the angels and again imagine yourself on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah and Allah is talking about you Allah will say to the angels address my servant and present all his deeds to him and he start with the minor sins and hide his major sins from him so the man will come to the podium and the rest of the creation are looking at him waiting whether he's going to be from the people of the right or from the people with of the left so the angels will say to him have you committed this sin on that day, in that, on that place, with those individuals? And the man would say yes. And they would say to him, and did you do this yawmi kada, wa kada, wa kada? And he would say yes. Qala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is so concerned about the major sins that he did. In his mind he's thinking, subhanallah, all this is about minor sins that I committed. The look that I gave my brother. An action that I did. A kalima that I said. 
that you consider to be minor and this is how Allah is treating me and the angels of Allah is questioning, are questioning me Qala wa huwa mushfiq and he's concerned about the major sins and when his minor sins are all over the angels will say for every minor sin that you commit Allah will reward you with hasana subhanallah not with punishment now with every sin that you commit Allah will punish you in hellfire for a day or a year no for every minor sin Allah will reward you for one hasana if you came to the podium and you have one hundred thousand minor sins then the angels would say walk away with one hundred hasanat and the man would say ay rabbi oh my lord I have committed sins that they're not here. He wanna become, he will become greedy. He's saying to Allah, forget about the minor sins. If you're gonna reward me hasana for every minor sins, what about the major sins that I did? What about the river that I, I consumed? What about the, the, the lies that I said? So subhanallah, yaqulu aba dar, and I can see the smile of the messenger of Allah when he said this statement. Yani imagine from the mercy of your Lord. You commit a sin, I commit sin. And he turned those sins into hasanat. And then the man will say, I want to see my major sins. What does that mean? It means the individual who committed those sins on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah, if he dies with Tawbah, then all his major sins will be turned into Hasanat. As you know, Hadith Abu Tawid, an elderly man, very old, his back is bent on a cane, hardly walking to the Messenger of Allah concerned about what the messenger of Allah would say to him and the man said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O messenger of Allah what would you say about a man who did not leave a sin except that he committed and there is nothing evil but that he did the messenger of Allah looked at this old man and he saw the concern of this man and he said to him, I aslamt, did you become a Muslim? Did you accept there's only one God worthy of worship and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ أَمَّا أَنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, for my case of messenger of Allah, I bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship and that you are the messenger of Allah and then the messenger of Allah said then engage yourself with good deeds and don't worry about your sins because Allah will overlook and the man said what about my major sins what about the things that I did and the man the messenger of Allah said Allah will overlook them Allah is the greatest. Allah is the merciful. And the old man turned and he started walking away from the messenger of Allah repeating those statements. This is your Lord. This is Allah. Allah is not eager to punish you. Allah does not enjoy you seeing you in hellfire. Rather Allah wants you to repent and to come back to him and that's why as soon as you come back he accepts you لذلك يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والحديث الصحيح صححه الباني وغيره قال لا يتمنين اقواما لو اكثر من السيئات he says certain people would wish and desire if they commit they have committed so many sins in their lifetime this is not a green light for you and i to commit sins but this is to show a window 
from the mercy of your Creator that no, no matter what you did, no matter what you said, no matter what type of, of sins you were involved, as soon as you make that turn and you come back to your Lord, Allah would overlook everything. Now, does that mean we should be relaxed? Does that mean we don't have to worry about anything? No. As a matter of fact, just because Allah is generous, we should not take that for granted. We should be more eager to do good deeds. Now listen to the following point. My sin would affect you. My sin would affect every single individual in this majlis and part of, who was part of this ummah. And your sin would affect me as well. And look to the story of a man from Bani Israel. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam dragging behind him 70,000 of Bani Israel from Bani Israel. 70,000. And all of them weak, hungry. Their livestock is with them. Sheep, camels, cow, whatever they have. Their children can hardly walk. Their women are so tired. Their elderly can hardly walk. And, the, and the Musa alayhi salatu wasalam brought these people to the desert and he said, let us pray to Allah for rain. And Musa prayed. And he prayed. And he prayed. But there was no rain. There was no dua that is answered. Nothing's coming down from heaven. Nothing coming down from above. فَقَالَ Musa. Musa said, Ay Rabbi, Oh my Lord, I've been calling you to bless us with rain. But nothing is coming down. Allah said to Musa, Ay Musa, he said, amongst you, there's one servant. One servant. Not 50,000. Not 1,000. Not 10. But there is one servant amongst you. Who's been challenging me through his sins. And because of him, you have been deprived from rain. One person, subhanAllah. Musa, he turned to the people. And he said, what have you do? What have you done? Your Lord is saying, until that man comes out, it will not rain. Until he walks away from the crowd, it will not rain. فَقَالَ Musa, Musa said, Ya أَيُّهَا Asi." Oh, the man who disobeyed his Lord. The reign of Allah has been withheld because of you. Leave. So for the rest to survive. One person. Not a line of people. Not a group of people. One individual. Now imagine you and I. Who some of us, subhanAllah, every single day openly challenging Allah with ma'asim. And then we turn we turn and we raise our hands and we say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give this Ummah victory. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help our brothers in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Sudan, in Yemen, in Saudi, in Emirat. Help us and have to have better Iman and better Taqwa. We raise our hands. You see the day of the 27th of Ramadan. You see Sheikh today is weeping and crying. Thousands and thousands of people behind him making dua. You see them through the TV that they all sincere and crying. But at the same time, you don't see any response. You don't see any result. We, don't know, we do not see anything. Why? Have we ever asked ourselves? Perhaps it is you. Perhaps it's me. One person. So Allah said to, Musa said to that individual, leave for the rest of Bani Israel to survive. 
And the man he looked into himself. He said, In kharaj if tadahat. If I walk, imagine 70,000. If I walk out of this, then everybody would know that I am the sinner. And if I remain with them, then they will all die. So he looked into himself. He covered his head and he wept. Oh Allah, I disobeyed you for 40 years. Oh Allah, cover my sins and accept my repentance. And all of a sudden it rained. Musa, who was waiting to see that individual to come out, did not see anyone coming out. فَقَالَ أَيْ رَبِّ Oh Allah, you said the individual, unless he leaves, it will not rain. It rained. Allah said, It is he who I deprived you because that I allowed it to rain on you. It is that man. It is because of him I let it rain. He repented. Now Musa said, Ay Rabbi, oh my Lord, I want to see this individual that you accepted. Because if Allah accepts one sajda from you, you are from the people of Jannah, Kama Qala ibn Mas'ud. One sajda. If one sajda, not two sajda, each rakah has two sajda. If one of them is accepted, you are from the people of Jannah. Subhanallah. Now Musa said, I want to see this man that his tawbah is being accepted. I want to see with my own eyes. Allah said, O oh Musa, I covered his sin. I covered him for 40 years while he was disobeying me. Do you think I would expose him when he repented, I will never do this. Subhanallah. يقول زين العابدين أنا الذي أغلق الأبواء أحما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماذيت في ذنبي ويسترني أنا الذي أغلق الأبواب مجتهدة على المعاصي وعين الله تنظرني. He says سبحان الله الله is so patient with me, so merciful with me. It is I. It is me. أنا الذي أغلق الأبواب مجتهدة. I bring my ma'asir to my room. I bring my sin to a confined place where no one else can see me. And I make sure the curtains are closed. I make sure the doors are locked. I make sure there's no one who has access to this place. And I will disobey Allah knowing that Allah is looking at me knowing that he knows what I conceal he knows what I have in my heart yet I disobey so subhanallah don't say it is my sin it is my masiyah it is me it is myself no what I do what I do it will affect you and what you do it will affect us so we all have to fear Allah concerning this Ummah because it is you and I who are the basis of this Ummah. So Ikhwati Fillah, don't take it light and keep in mind whatever we do is for us or against us. To save time, what are the benefits of repenting and coming back to Allah. What are they? Why do we have to repent? Other than the orders of Allah, why do we have to repent? Because, ya ikhwati fillah, if you repent, Allah will love you. If you repent, Allah will love you. Because Allah said in the Quran, Inna Allaha yuhibbu tawwabin. Inna Allaha yuhibbu tawwabin. Allah loves those who, those who repent. But then you may say to yourself, sometimes, Brother Saeed, I commit a sin and then I repent. And then I go back to the same sin. 
And I feel shy because shaitan is telling me, you playing with Allah? You're not sincere. You know, you don't, you, you, Allah will never accept you. What should I do? See? Since you have that in mind, listen to the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to him and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni adh, ya O Messenger of Allah, I commit sins. Qala tub, repent. He said, but I keep coming back to the same sin. He said, keep coming back to the tawbah. He said, ila matta, until, for how long? And he said, until the shaytan is defeated. Until the shaytan is defeated. See, min kamal al-insan, from the perfections of mankind, that is imperfect. That you are imperfect. And Allah knows that you are imperfect and you will commit so many sins. Therefore, his gates of repentance and rahmah is always open. So as soon as you repent, Allah will love you. And subhanallah, if someone tells you that Sheikh Sudais who is here, who is here loves you, he likes you, as a matter of fact, not even love, he likes you. You may feel very proud. You may say, well, Sheikh Sudais is my friend, he likes me. He talks to me. When, when he comes to a gathering, he gives me special greetings. You know, he loves me. This is an individual. An individual. But imagine when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who loves you. Is the one who loves you. And what, what happens when Allah loves you? Come on, if you say, Muslim, you call the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah loves an individual, He will call Jibreel. Ay Jibreel, come here, O Jibreel. Jibreel will come. Allah will say to Jibreel, I love my servant Umar, or Abdullah, or Aisha, or Fatima. So you must love him or her. And Jibreel will love that individual. And then Allah will say to Jibreel, that is not enough. Go and call to the, to the inhabitants of the universe and order them and tell them that Allah loves so and so, so you must love that individual. And then Jibreel will make that call and then everybody will love you. You see this man who's smiling at your face, helping you with simple papers, serving you, and you don't know why. You see this person greeting you with warmth, greeting, you don't know why. Because perhaps it's because Allah loves you. So just by repenting to Allah, you gain that. You gain the love of Allah and Allah loves you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, ya ikhwati fillah. When you repent, your heart would, sh your heart would shine. The Allah would place light in your heart. Noor in your heart. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, when I don't understand a matter, a fiqh issue, a hadith, a aqeed matter, when I don't understand, he said, I would go and ask as istighfar. Repent for what? Subhanallah, Ibn Taymiyyah. If Ibn Taymiyyah is repenting, what should we do? Istighfar? And then the nur in the heart shines. Gives you amazing understanding. And subhanallah, look at the other side. Allah bless you, especially with the new Muslims who today or yesterday accepted Islam. Their heart is as beautiful as shining as that light. As clean, as pure as the light. And when you repent, likewise. But guess what? As soon as you commit a sin, a black dot would be placed on the heart. If you repent from that and you come back to your Lord, then that dot would be removed. If you continue with the same sin, then another dot would be added. Then third, then fourth, then fifth, until your heart becomes shield with 
الران so no hadith no ayah no mawida will sink to your heart someone will recite quran from cover to cover to your ears and your heart is still as solid as a rock why because you have that shield you have that ran al qalb this is because of a masih this is because you did not repent no as soon as you repent that would your heart would be peeled off that would be removed from the heart it would be peeled off and then your heart will shine once again we see the light of the quran and the sun and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you that taqwa that tenderness in the heart and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep you closer to him also ikhwati fillah from the tawbah from the repentance is igatha min allah madad min allah help from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you think you don't have enough well repent if you think your children are not listening then repent if you think your wife is not obedient to you then repent if you think your husband is harsh then repent if you think you're not making profit if you have your business then repent if you think your health is not in good enough then repent فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّةٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh عليه الصلاة والسلام is saying to his people The moment that you accept Allah Allah will give you the blessings of this earth The ni'am of this earth Children, wealth, status All you need to do is istighfar Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. As long as your tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah, the dhikr of Allah, Astaghfirullah. Subhanallah. Also, ikhwati fillah. When you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will please your Lord. Farhatun lil Rabb. Allah would be so happy, so pleased with you. Subhanallah. I mean, sometimes we go out of our ways, we bend backwards to please a spouse, to please a husband or a wife, to please your boss, to please someone who has authority over you. Just to see them smile, just to see them being happy just to see them being pleased imagine by you repenting to Allah coming back to Allah Allah is more pleased than anyone that you can ever imagine and listen to the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi he said Allah is more pleased with your repentance than a man who was on his mount a man in the desert, traveling on a camel, everything on his camel, his food, his water, his knee. And all of a sudden, he lost a camel. He lost a camel. Subhanallah. When he lost a camel, he looked for the camel, but he could not find it. And finally, he realized that he has to die. It's too hard. He has no provision, no water, no food. He has to die. So he went under the tree so he can die peacefully. And while he's lying down, he opened his eyes and he saw his camel, subhanallah, over his head. So he grabbed the camel out of happiness and he said, Ya Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. He said, the Messenger of Allah, he's out of happiness. He made a mistake. 
Instead of saying, you are my Lord and I am your servant. He said, you are my servant and I am my Lord and the messenger of Allah is my. Now the messenger of Allah said, Allah with your repentance is more happier than that man. More pleased than that individual. So subhanallah, if your child cries, you try to please that child and make him smile once again. If your wife is upset, subhanallah, if Ummah Ali or Umar Umar, Umar, if your wife is upset, you will go home tonight smiling? No, mashallah, all of you will read Surah Yasin and Surah Al Kahf before you go home because you know you're up for a fight. And you will do everything and anything to please your wife. But Allah is telling you, I'll be more pleased with your repentance than that man who lost everything. So why are we are so stingy with Allah? Why we not willing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Also, ya ikhwati fillah, let us see what are the things that can aid us, help us to maintain repentance one i will say it very quick al-ikhlas sincerity everything that you do you must do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was a sincere individual and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him because innahu min ibadin al mukhlasi he was from the individual, from the sincere individual. Allah saved him from a sin. Now, sins is what we should, the thing that we should repent from. Now, for you to be safe from sins, you have always to have sincerity. Number two, ya ikhwati fillah, you must love Allah. You must love Allah. See, all of us, if I ask you, do you love Allah? Let me ask you, do you love Allah? Raise your hand. Do you really love Allah? You know, all of you raised your hand. But when the order of Allah comes, how many of us would implement? When the orders of Messenger of Allah comes, how many of us would implement? If I say the Sunnah is to keep your beer, and you just told me you love Allah and His Messenger. You say, Ya Akhi, but you know, Allah said, In Allah, Jameel, you have to look nice. Nice, look nice in the sight of whom? In the sight of the one that you love? Or in the sight of the ones that you try to please? See, love is not a, a word, it's not a lip service. Love is action, an action that we perform. If you love Allah, then you have to show it through your actions. Not here only, but actions. Everybody says, my love is here because they know that we cannot open their chest and say this, the chest, mashallah, is empty and there's no love. The other thing, ikhwati fillah, struggle, mujahada. Always, a mu'min is always in the state of trial. And you will never rest until we die so you always constantly you have to keep up the fight always and subhanallah i had to learn the hard way let me tell you this quick story i was flying from the state i was living in the state that, those days and you know the brothers mashallah when you go and you give a lecture and the mashallah they try to squeeze you every single drop of had ilm that you have and then at the end of the day they want to take you to the airport so mashallah we were struggling and finally we got to the airport late and i'm running left and right i'm panting and my I'm, I'm catching my breath and finally i got into the plane and i threw myself on the seat and i sat down and i said to myself oh i am so tired I thought I said to myself, all of a sudden I heard this voice 
saying to me, people like you will not rest until they die. For a moment I thought, I'm hearing my thoughts. And I looked to my left, is a Yehudi man who sat after me. A Yehudi man with the hair, the hat. And he told me, you will not rest until you die. He said, because he saw me wearing my thobe and my kufi, and he knew I'm a Muslim. And I said, subhanAllah, you are absolutely, positively right. So a mu'min and a Muslim, ya ikhwati fillah, we always have to be in the state of mujahada. There is no rest for us except the grave. So here, as long as you're doing mujahada, inshallah, you're on the right path. Also, ya ikhwati fillah, keep your hopes, live your life of akhirah as though you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next minute. I see a lot of brothers, mashallah, getting ready for wudu. But who said you're going to make it to the wudu before you make tawbah? Who said you're going to make it to a salah before you make tawbah? No one. So all, always do not plan to live forever, but plan that you're going to meet your Lord tomorrow. I'm not saying sit in the corner of the masjid and sit there and say, you know, khalas, I have to. No, I'm saying work for both. Work for both. Also, ya ikhwati fillah, you and I were very weak. And we must maintain the dua because madad and help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If we cannot focus on that, if we cannot get the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be no one to help. The other thing that you need to know, and we all need to know, ya ikhwati fillah, Every time that you are about, you are about to commit a ma'siyah, remember your status in the sight of Allah and your place on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Remember that. Just remember. I will leave you with this. Before you commit that ma'siyah, remember Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Remember grave. Remember death. And remember, you will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, face to face, one on one, no turjuman, no one's going to translate for you. And he will question you about the upcoming sin that you're going to commit. If you remember this, maybe that will desist you from pursuing, pursuing that ma'asiyah. Wallahu a'la wa a'lam. جزاكم الله خير سبحانه سبحانه رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خيرا شيخ سعيد راجي for a truly beneficial talk we will now in share Allah have time for the question and answer session as usual we will begin from the question from the brothers from the front mic and then alternate between the sisters so once we're ready the question from the front mic for the brothers السلام عليكم my name is Muhammad Idris and uh, my question is that can anybody do a miracle rather than a prophet? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi al-Kareem Can a person perform a miracle other than the prophets of Allah? Miracles are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a person to perform a miracle without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will not happen. It will not happen. However, there are something called karamat, which means a person may do something that is unusual to the people. A person, and this karamat is not an indication that a person is a righteous or a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something that the situation dictates and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitate. So a person to say, I have miracles to perform, it is not for what we know from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some things that are unusual can be done by other than those who call themselves a righteous, illusion, or magic, or something that can deceive the people can be performed and a person with the simple knowledge of the situation may label that as a miracle. Wallahu a'la wa'alam. 
The next question from the sister's mic. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Um, my question is that uh, how do you know for sure whether Allah accepts your repentance? Subhanallah, from the beauty of this deen is that you always anxious to know the future and always excited to know your future and the status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no one can claim other than the prophets and the messengers of Allah that they are certain that the uh, sin or the repentance of that individual is being accepted. However, the ulama said there are certain signs that the person can see and from that can he can assume or indicate that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his or her tawbah. One is that the situation of the individual changed to better. So the person subhanallah he was struggling with the salah five daily prayers and when he made tawbah the salah became so comforting to him his heart so easy to perform and not only that now he performs five daily prayers and ten nafil sunnah and he has no problem the second they said you will see that person always being engaged in good deeds insha'Allah so the status and the situation of the person it would be it would be improved this is one of some of the signs of the ulama of the, of the ahadith sunnah wal jama'ah and they indicate others but this insha'Allah would be sufficient bi idnillah and by the way before I say anything when I before I left the hotel Sheikh Yusuf asked he said ask this question and he's asking me to ask you this question is there anyone here who is willing to accept Islam that's all and he said he said repeat this ask them is there anyone who is willing to accept Islam now if the situation arises just let us know the next question from the brother's mic. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I just uh, want to ask you a question relating to repentance and da'wah. Yani, yesterday I couldn't have a chance to ask the very same question that if we're talking in terms of da'wah, what we call it back in South Africa, there are two kinds of da'wah. That is the ice cream da'wah, which people, they make it a ritual thing. Like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad will say that people like to say, now I'll make you a Muslim, but they do not make any follow-up into that particular individual, right? Now the question is, which I wanted to ask yesterday, or last night rather, was what is dawah without follow-up? Now the question that I'm asking you today is based on yani, uh, uh, repentance. If I make any scene, right? The kind of a scene which maybe perhaps uh, I'll be perceiving it as maybe a minor one or a major scene, right? Now, how do I know that if, for example, I'm making prayers that, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps he will forgive my sins or not, right? But in the back of my mind, I know this thing, I have to do this thing because it's for my survival, right? For example. Your question, brother. Yeah, the question is, how do you know? that you are being accepted or not i mean your duas are being accepted or not okay are we talking here i would answer both whether the dua, dua and the toba as i stated earlier the toba there is no one can tell you you have been accepted or your toba has been accepted we can only pray and wish that allah accepted our toba however as i stated earlier the condition of the individual would improve. He will become better Muslim. And by that being performed, the person, inshallah, we can say and indicate, inshallah, with the will of the, by the will of Allah and the permission of Allah, he is he has been accepted. Again, there is no guarantee. No guarantee. As a mu'min, you always should be concerned about your sins. Always. As some of the ulama said. The hypocrites, they see the sins as a fly that passed by their nose. The mu'min, they see the sins as a mountain over their head. So you never know and you will never know you've been accepted. 
100% until you die. But inshallah, if the condition of the individual is changed to better, that that's, this is a sign bi idnillah. In terms of the dua, how do your dua has been accepted? The ulama rahimahumullah said, as we know, there are four different ways that the person, the dua can be respond. One, that Allah responds to your dua in this worldly life and you see the result. Two, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, protected you from a calamity that was coming down to you from your qadr and then through the dua that calamity was stopped through your dua and the third and the last one is you will see the result of that dua on the day of yawm al-qiyamah bi idnillah and everybody who ever made dua they, and their dua was answered they will wish that the dua, their dua was never answered and they were rewarded in here after but again there is no way you can tell certainly that your tawbah is being accepted other than the condition of the individual being improved. Wallahu a'ala wa'ala. The next question from the sister's mic. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know how we sin sometimes, for example, I lie and I say, astaghfirullah, immediately. Is that sufficient or do I have to go to like, pray salat to tawbah or something? If you say Brother, before you before you answer this question, it's something related which a sister just asked me, that she thinks that people live in, especially Muslims, it's a non-Muslims question, saying that Muslims live in guilt constantly because they always think about repentance. So since it's related that when we say astaghfirullah, it only means, she says, the non-Muslim says it means you will only get repentance at the end of the world. So you're going to wait and live a guilty life all your life. Now, for the question of the non-Muslim. Muslims, they live between hope and fear. And this is how the prophets and the messenger of Allah live their lives. You will see the lives in the biography of the prophets of Allah that they used to live between hope and fear. Fear for their shortcomings, that they did not perform their ibadah, the act of worship, as Allah ordained them to do. Fear that they did not do their ultimate best. At the same time, hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept their good deeds and they will never despair they will never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's also this is very dangerous if a person lives through fear 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 then that person will become qanid and he will lose you know the sense of doing anything good and then he will not be able to bridge to the other side at the same time the person lives hope 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 then he will be relaxed and every time he commit a ma'asi or sin he will say inshallah Allah will forgive me Allah is ghafoorur rahim and this is what some people do and this is what other people may do but Muslims alhamdulillah we live them both we live them both and in any system subhanallah I don't know how, how sometimes we don't analyze it in a simple way in any system people live through fear and hope Fear if they commit, if they break the law of the country, that they will be deported or they will be punished. And for the hope that if they obey, obey the law of the land, that no harm would come to them. And this is the worldly life. Imagine with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I forgot the, the, the question of the Muslim sister now. Can she ask the question again, please? I ask that, for example, if I, as we all seen and immediately we say astaghfirullah, no. like I lied and I said astaghfirullah, is that sufficient or do I have to do salat al-tawbah? No. Now, if you lie, and by the way, there's no rainbow lies, there's no colors for lies. There's no white lies, there's no pink lies, there's no black lies. Lie is a lie. You cannot really say this is like, no. So we all should abstain from lying. Period. Now, if you say a lie and you say astaghfirullah on the moment and you're sincere, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept 
and you don't have to do much of things. If you pray, Alhamdulillah is good, but that moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your tawbah. And this is what He promised. And as we know, there's four well known conditions of tawbah, and that is one, that you must desist, discontinue with the evil that you're doing. Number two, that you must feel remorse. Number three, that you must promise to Allah that you will not return to it. And number four, that this is between you and another human being, that you ask them to forgive you or return their properties and belongs to them. Allahu a'la wa'ala.